this hour on I-24 News, North Korea says it will not stop its nuclear missile program and says talks with the United States will never happen as long as the United States and South Korea continue their joint military exercises. Plus, the investigation into bribery scandal surrounding Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu now in its final phase as two of his closest allies attempt to introduce legislation to protect him from the probe. And the Trump administration is reversing a ban on bringing big game hunting trophies from Africa back to the United States. From the I-24 News Studios in Times Square in New York, this is Crossroads with David Schuster and Shana Estulin. And Tal Heinrich is in for Shana. Always a pleasure to have you here. Great to be here. The global efforts to try and stop North Korea's nuclear threat have hit another rhetorical wall. North Korea's envoy to the United Nations has now ruled out negotiations with Washington as long as a joint U.S.-South Korea military exercise continues. And the official said Pyongyang's nuclear program will never stop. I-24 News correspondent Marcus White has the latest. This is a look at satellite imagery of a North Korean shipyard. Inside, the site of what appears to be a launch canister, which experts say could be used to develop ballistic missiles capable of being launched from a submarine. Pyongyang has conducted dozens of missile tests this year, but the last two months have been quiet since a missile launch over Japan September 15th. The United States hopes that leads to a chance to speak with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. According to Reuters, U.S. Defense Secretary James Mattis on Thursday said, so long as they stop testing, stop developing, they don't export their weapons, there would be opportunity for talks. It appears the Trump administration is worried that America's missile defense system isn't capable enough to protect cities across the U.S. According to The New York Times, the administration is developing its plan to try and stop North Korea's missiles before they get too far from Pyongyang's airspace. The strategy includes stepping up the use of cyber weapons, which would interfere with the rogue nation's control systems prior to missiles being launched. Also, using drones and fighter jets to shoot the missiles down after liftoff. If those options fail, the West Coast Missile Defense Network would be expanded. Meanwhile, Chinese President Xi Jinping's special envoy left Friday to head to Pyongyang. The trip by Song Tao comes just a week after President Xi and President Trump took part in a summit in Beijing. Also from North Korea, a new battle for a defector who escaped a barrage of bullets fired at him as he was trying to flee soldiers at the demilitarized zone. Doctors say he's infected with dozens of parasites that look like this. One of the parasites removed from his body was 10 inches or 27 centimeters long. In my over 20-year-long career as a surgeon, I've only seen something like this in a textbook. Doctors say the infection shows just how poor food and hygiene conditions are in North Korea. According to the Korea Biomedical Review, the worm infecting the defector was spread through plants fertilized with human feces. Sources say the parasites would have continued to grow inside of him had he not been shot and taken to the hospital. The soldier is expected to survive. His name and rank have not been released. Marcus White, I-24 News. And to further discuss this, we're joined here on set by James Knowles, Senior Fellow at the World Policy Institute. James, is yes. there a way we can look at this statement coming from North Korea today, maybe in a positive way? Because basically it means that the North Koreans are not ruling out negotiations completely. The term still somewhat exists in the country. Yes, although it confirms what I've said for a long time, which is that North Korea really is not interested in negotiating away its nuclear weapons. It's willing to negotiate as long as there's not a precondition that the aim of the negotiations is eliminating its nuclear weapons. In other words, they will never give up their nuclear weapons. That's essentially a non-starter. They might be willing to talk about other things, such as the United States <laughs> taking its troops off the Korean Peninsula, but they're not giving up their nukes. Uh, not, in, not in the foreseeable future, not with any deal that the U.S. administration would accept. Well, they call it deterrent. Well, it is for them because their conventional military force has weakened considerably since the 1980s when their economy was much healthier. And consequently, they're not confident in their ability to defeat a conventional uh, conflict involving the South Koreans and the Americans. So they rely on the nuclear deterrent as a, as a way of surviving in a, what they see as a very hostile world. Some of this came from the North Korean envoy to the United Nations in Geneva, and he talked about the United States being able to blackmail his country. Is that the fear that the United States, because we have nuclear weapons, would somehow tell North Korea, okay, you need to stop your program or else? 
Well, the irony of that is we say exactly the same thing about the North Koreans. <laughs> the nuclear mess missiles would give them the opportunity to blackmail the United States. In fact, neither side has that ability because a nuclear war would be a catastrophe. And uh, I think the main reason why North Korea wants nuclear weapons is simply to prevent a war, to deter a war. Although they speak in very bellicose terms, uh, I don't think they can use their nuclear weapons for blackmail, and neither can we. Because they're convinced that the 25,000 U.S. troops that are in South Korea would be part of some invasion force that they may have to confront? Well, yes. I mean, with the, uh, particularly with the military plans of South Korea and the United States, including explicitly a, a decapitation plan to eliminate the North Korean leadership as a way of, of inducing regime change, that, needless to say, worries the North Korean leadership quite a lot. So uh, I think they have a, an understandable uh, interest in deterring any kind of attack. And they, of course, are fearful that uh, without that nuclear deterrent, they wouldn't be able to do it. They saw what happened to Saddam Hussein, what happened to Gaddafi after they gave, gave up nuclear programs. And I think they see it as too much of a risk to give up the programs they have already uh, successfully achieved nuclear weapons using. What is your personal take on a military option regarding to North Korea? Well, I think it would be a disaster in part because even though most people are talking about things like missiles and, and so forth, which are a potential threat, but an, a one that possibly could be confronted by ABMs and so forth, but the threat that cannot be confronted, that can't be uh, deflected in any way, is that North Korea could use nuclear mines. So even if you tried to overthrow the regime by marching north. It's a different set of game from they what could, we know. They could explode a nuclear mine, destroy the first forces that go in there, and you know, really make it an incredibly uh, bloody affair. It would be very hard to conclude such a war. It was remarkable to see the story this week of the North Korean soldier who defected, ran across the border. He was shot by his own troops in the north. He survived. They operate on him in South Korea, and they find worms in his stomach. What do you make of that? Well, this is consistent with things I've heard for years about from people who have been to North Korea, who've studied it, and that is, in a sense, their economy has been deindustrializing. They used to have very large production of chemical fertilizer, for example, in the 1970s. In fact, during World War II, the northern part of Korea was the main source of fertilizer and uh, nitrogenous explosives, high explosives, for Japan. And so the country had very developed production capability. But that's run down, and whatever is left is now largely used to make explosives for the military rather than making fertilizer for the farmers. So the farmers have to rely on human feces and animal feces instead. So the North Koreans have been pointing out now to the military, the joint military exercises between the United States and South Korea, but these drills have been happening for years. How do you assess this escalation, latest escalation between the U.S. And, well, and North Korea? Do you see it as a result of the Trump administration um, or just other previous U.S. administrations maybe overlooking this threat and it, it was just as extent as it is now? There is an escalation and part of it is that Trump's rhetoric is obviously much more bellicose than previous administrations. Another thing is this is the largest concentration of U.S. naval power in the region for at least a decade. So the, the scale of these exercises and their frequency has also been increasing. It's true that U.S. and South Korea have been uh, having joint military exercises and North Korea has been protesting them for a very long time. But the scale and the frequency have definitely been increasing. And that looks to many uh, in the North as a preparation for some kind of uh, attack. In addition to the fact that both Trump himself and some of his advisors have talked about preventive war and talked about the possibility of using force against North Korea. Do you have any hope for the um, representative of President Xi from China who's going to Pyongyang, and this comes in the wake of the, the Trump-Xi visits over the past uh, few weeks, any hope that that will have any tangible impact on the North Koreans? Well, I think it might, I mean, the best we can hope for is that it might calm the situation for a period of time because we indeed haven't seen any missile tests or nuclear tests for a few months from North Korea. But I'm quite sure that the, the Chinese can't induce North Korea to give up the nuclear weapons. They may be able to get them to delay any pending tests for a period of time in order to let things calm down a bit, but I don't expect much more than that. Well, and the question is to what extent are the U.S. administration and the Chinese on the same page regarding North Korea? Right. James Nelt, senior fellow at the World Policy Institute. James, thanks for coming in. We appreciate it. My Good pleasure.
Thank you. Still to come, Iraqi forces just recaptured a final Islamic State stronghold. It's another ISIS battlefield defeat. Plus, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu will be questioned for a sixth time in his ongoing corruption scandal.